Now I got Fred's yeah. computer world. I can go downstairs. I am downstairs now, but my computer, my basic computer is upstairs, is connected to the internet by way of a cable modem. Cable modem is connected to a router. Uh, my computer is connected to the router. And then I have a wire going from the router upstairs to a switch downstairs. Now, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, know what a computer is, a modem, and a router. Is there anybody would like, like to have any clarification of cable modem and router? Okay, so I'm assuming you know what those things are. I'm my, not... my new cable modem has a built-in Wi-Fi router. Sometimes they're combined, yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're single units. Yep. Now, the router, I say, has a wire that goes downstairs to what I call a switch. Now, some of you may or may not know what a switch is. It looks like a router, but it's not. Ah, it's... right. It looks like a router, but Drew... Here we have that, that black wire coming from upstairs, and I have, uh, it's an eight port gigabit, yeah, gigabit router. And Drew, what is a switch? You wanna explain what a switch is as opposed to a hub? Well, well, a router uh, basically sends packets between two network interfaces. Mm -hmm. And a switch is essentially all of those yellow cables and the black cable are all on the same, uh, um, on the same network, same uh, side of the router, so that they can see each other. Okay, and uh, the, the the route the, the switches that you get are what we call auto sensing. Uh, you you don't have to know much about you know whether it's sending or receiving. You just you know you plug it in and away it goes. Now, I, I have my downstairs wired. Fred. Yes, sir. Who the is question, You're the the question I have, the word switch, is that a misnomer? Because it looks to me like a junction box, if you know the electrical term, or just a union of all seven connections to the one black wire. Is there a switching mechanism? You know how you used to have an A-B switch? It's not. That was an actual switch. It's not is like that. that. This they're all they're all pretty independent. They're they're all independent, and and they're bidirectional. Uh, it, it doesn't share the resources. Uh, they're but, all independent. Now, basically, it's a splitter, then, right? Splitter. Um, it's, it, you can if you if you have a cable in your house and you're running a splitter to get three cables into four cables or five cables. This is serves the same purpose. I mean, it's giving uh, the lower part of the house uh, additional network connections from that are expanding on that one black connection. It essentially does the same thing, yes. But they, they call it technically, they call it a switch. An, yeah. auto, an auto switch, if you will. So this is coming from the router. The black wire actually is coming from the router. And this is downstairs in my heating area. And the heating area that has one of those yellow wires connecting on the other side of this is an ethernet wall jack. Uh, that blue wire then takes uh, the one signal and connects it to my printer. And another one of those wires connects to a computer downstairs, which is my wife's computer. So if we just go back here, one of the switches goes to a network printer. Can you see my mouse move or shall I? Uh... Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think I can turn on some ink too, but uh, just pointing right now. So one of the wires goes to the network printer and one of the wires goes to through that ethernet jack. Uh, another ethernet jack goes to the computer downstairs, which is Windows 11, but uh, it has XP in a virtual machine. Now tonight I'm not going to go into uh, how you create a virtual machine. 
I am going to use a virtual machine, not for the XP, but for Windows 10. So you, you're going to see a, um, a Windows 11 and then a, another version of Windows, Windows 10, as a virtual machine, essentially for practical purposes. It's just another operating system inside of Windows 11, which happens to be Windows 10. And to add to the mix, I have some other printers and other scanners, but the important thing is upstairs is me on Windows 10, downstairs is this other computer. I also connect to this other computer upstairs or downstairs using uh, any desk. Uh, I use TeamViewer for many, many years, and all of a sudden it says, uh, I am commercial, you know, I have to buy a license. I couldn't get out of it. You know, they, they, no matter what I did, I upgraded, I uh, reinstalled, I did everything. I could not get out of that uh, upgrade to a team viewer commercial licensing. So I went with AnyDesk. AnyDesk, let me tell you, is really, really great. Really, really great. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using AnyDesk tonight, but I just want to let you know that's how I communicate in addition to the network to control this Windows 11 computer from upstairs, and also to control the XP from upstairs. So I have access to the files using the network, but I also have control to run executables and to do whatever I want on the Windows 11. Comment, question? Oh, I, yeah. Um... John was wondering about the type of Wi-Fi that you have. Type of Wi-Fi? I mean, are you on Wi-Fi a six or a five or? You know, honestly, Drew, I don't know. I, I, my, my, my. Uh, router... So your your computer world, you're using an iPad right now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm using the iPad, but uh, no. And it's no, connected. No, right... Right, right now, John, I'm using this Windows 11 computer. Everything is wired. I just have the iPad next to me to see what I'm projecting onto the screen. To make sure that what I'm what I'm. So, so is the Y is the iPad got its own? The iPad is on Wi-Fi. Correct. Right. And the router is upstairs. Is providing the Wi-Fi. Correct. Right. So more of your computer world includes the iPad. Absolutely, right. And if you're seeing something on the iPad, like what we're seeing, some is that by Wi-Fi network or by projecting from the X11 oh. computer? How is that image getting to your iPad. Yeah, I'm just doing a separate uh, login. That, that's what I did tonight. You, to you logged into Zoom on the iPad. Yeah, yeah I, I try, I'm trying to figure out, as, as Drew has mentioned, he has, uh, uh, you have the same situation, but you have a wireless uh, iPad. You, you, you have it either wireless or, or Bluetooth, correct, Drew? Um, I'm not using an iPad. I'm using a you know, Samsung Android tablet. I, I'm sorry. In all due respect, I'm sorry. And Android and Windows are have mirroring uh, compatibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the uh, the mirroring is over the network. Yes. And so, Fred, part of your computer world is also that iPad. Correct. Which is getting a Wi-Fi signal because that's the way iPads work. That's correct. Yes from the router down to an iPad that's downstairs. Right, which is, means he's got a good router and a good signal. Fred, can I, ask, can I mention something, Fred? Sure, John. Uh, Sandy, sure, go. Okay, uh, I was thinking about what you said about Team Viewer before, and I've been using it for years. Uh, and I, I found out, uh, of course, you want to use the free version. So I, um, they don't, they don't seem to allow you uh, to connect between two computers at, in, the, in the same house or on the same network. That's what I, maybe the same IP address. Uh, that's, that's what I found, because I would get messages saying you had to uh, upgrade. So I, I only, I only um, use, 
So I only use uh, Team Viewer is great, uh, you know, for uh, help helping somebody at their their house and you're at your house. There's no problem with something like that. I was Just using mentioned. yeah, I was using Team Viewer at the uh, computer store where I was teaching. Yeah, I, I, the reason I was using, I was sitting side by side with someone, but I was straining my eyes to to look and see his screen. So I was sitting side by side. We were using the same network. I never had a problem. Never had a problem. But in my house, I had I had uh, all all of a sudden I started getting warnings uh, when I was using yeah computer. For network. those of you, if you run into that problem. Is a um, it doesn't route over the internet, so you can't use it to help your friends and family. But there's a company that called No Machine. Um, that's actually NoMachine.com, and I don't know why they chose that name, but they make a free um, peer-to-peer encrypted uh, remote control program that is quite efficient and fast. Um, that I use inside the house. Um, I use TeamViewer if I'm remote, but if I'm actively going from computer to computer in the house, I use no machines so that I'm not taxing my minutes used on the TeamViewer account. Drew, would you be so kind as to put that into the chat, a, a link to it, or just, just put uh, the, the name no machine? Sure. Yeah. That sounds interesting, Drew. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and, and I... I also work on Windows and, and Linux, and it has a uh, the uh, Linux version works very well with the Windows version. Uh, for those of you who use both, okay. When, uh, Andy, comment, question. Uh, yeah, this is a Windows workshop. If <laughs> I get a call, if I get a call from someone looking for help on a Windows machine. The quickest and the simplest way that I've found is to use Windows Assistant. On every machine. Okay, Windows Remote Assistant. Uh, I've had. Oh, Quick that. Assist. Quick Assist. Are you referring yeah. to Quick Assist? I think that's what it's called. I, I just I have an icon. I have to look. I'm on my Linux box now. Right. So. Uh, but yeah, yeah it's, it's when, because it it will let you do the remote control. It's very simple. Um, Can you be certain that it works between home versions, home versions, or must you have a pro version? It it I can confirm that it works on the home version. Okay. Um, the person who is providing technical support must be logged into a Microsoft account. Can you put that, just put the name of it, Andy, in, in the chat box, please? Got it. Got it. Good. Um, what it is. I've received uh, tech support from Microsoft using that um, when they remote into my computer. That's what they use. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as good as um, any desk is um, in terms of adjusting the screen size and making the remote screen the right size for your screen. Mm -hmm. um, but it's good in a pinch. Okay. Any other comments or questions about the layout here or any other comments about what we're talking about with remote access? 